Hey guys, welcome to episode 24 of the Sandcap Guide podcast. Uh, today, I'm delighted to uh, welcome Robin Bile. He's actually uh, a guy that we met um, through our other life as photographers on the island. And Robin has since become a contract employee with us and has been working with us for quite some time now and uh, does a fantastic job, great photographer. But that's not why we've got him here. <laughs> As um, when as we got to know each other, I found out a little known thing about the islands, and that is uh, surfing. Sanibel and Captiva are not really known for surfing, or um, you know, we don't have the deep waves and the deep water like we do on the other coast. And uh, apparently, I was completely wrong because Robin informed me that actually there's an active surfing community here. And uh, tell me a little bit about how, you know, I mean, how often can you get out surfing here, Robin? I'd say uh, on average. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm delighted to be here, guys, and uh, happy to be a part of the show. Thank you for coming. Um, so, yeah, no, I'd say on average maybe two or three times a month, you know, and if it's like we get a big swell event, like a hurricane or a big cold front, we may get three days back to back. Of surf so you're happy for hurricanes and bad weather is uh, that what you're yeah. trying to say it's a, it's a bittersweet <laughs> um you know kind of thing because obviously you know it's it's really scary to see if it actually hits somewhere and and all the damage and uh but of course yeah i mean we we uh reap the benefits of that and uh get really good surf here from it usually um, so ideal scenario would be a storm you know so that it doesn't affect anybody affect anybody else rips right down the middle of the gulf and had a big, big swell towards us. Is right, that right? Right. Yeah. When a, when a storm is first coming in, it's actually turning uh, counterclockwise. So it's actually uh, perfect if it's about maybe 50 to 100 miles off uh, the coast of Sanibel. And that'll send, um, you know, really nice swell out of the south right to us. And uh, actually the way the, the storm is turning at that point makes the wind all out of the east. So it's offshore wind. So we're getting this really nice swell. Uh, uh, with an offshore wind which is you know pushing the waves away from the beach so you're getting these perfect conditions for like a full day so what sort of uh so you're looking tell me a little bit about the sort of waves as from a complete novice uh, standpoint you don't want those short waves that crash you're looking for long swells that come in over a distance i mean explain how that works um well i mean if you're a beginner uh, it's it's yeah you can you can start pretty much any day at least just stay a little bit closer to the beach kind of Play on the whitewash like you did when you were a kid on a boogie board. Get used to how the wave pushes you. Um, but the way Captiva breaks, it's really, um, it's really more of a shore, like a beach break. Um, and it actually, uh, it can get really, um, what's the word, like uh, hollow, and it'll break really hard onto the sandbars. So it's a really quick kind of. You have to get up real quick and and get ready and go down the line. Um, whereas like if you went to the East coast to learn, it's a, it's a little bit more mellow, um, kind of a rolling, you know, swell. It's the Atlantic ocean. You get a little bit more swell period and, uh, it's a little better, better place to learn on the yeah. East side. Is that where you learned or did you actually learn here? The first wave I've ever caught on a surfboard was that blind pass here. Really? Really? Yep. And then, uh, and then after that, we spent a lot of time, you know, bouncing back and forth to the East coast. Uh, gotcha. Depending how, on the weather. How long have you been surfing? Oh, uh, I mean that's i've i've been in the water my whole life mm -hmm. um but surfing uh i would say it's close to 20 years at this point jeez actually like you know really surfing really into it mm -hmm. yeah before that it was just you know boogie boarding and skimboarding having fun wow but um yeah now it's it's been a while have you lived in fort myers southwest florida your entire life yeah i'm i'm actually a fifth generation floridian and uh wow. yeah i was born in, in fort myers that's awesome. incredible. That doesn't happen very often. I no. consider myself more of a local than about ninety percent of the population. <laughs> I've been there twenty years. Yeah, exactly. I get a lot of surprised looks when I tell people that. Fifth generation. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, t so back to you. You sort of hinted at it already. So, the best places for surfing on the islands. Where would you say? Well, I mean, are you going to give your spots I was away? Say, that's, that's <laughs> secret. Top secret. You don't tell that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, a general area then. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just joking anyway. I mean, Captiva is, is the, the main place that picks up the most swell. Um, in Sanibel, you don't really get as much surf on that side because it, it kind of has to wrap around the corner there. Um, so it kind of blocks a lot of it. 
So if you envisage uh, Captiva running due north-south, um, and then obviously, so the, the we're looking for storms that are coming in from the uh, west, from coming from um, the, out the middle of the Gulf. So I guess yeah. So it's going to be that's where it's going to be hitting. It's not going to go around the bottom end. Of- right. It it depends really. I mean, like I said, we get we get um, all summer we get hurricane surf and and tropical storms kind of out of the south, mm-hmm. kind of the tropics pushing up, and then all winter we get cold fronts that kind of push across the U.S. and then right across the Gulf. So it's out of the north. Um, hmm. so two different angles, right? You know, and what do you, what's your, how do you determine, do you have an app that you use or any kind of, um, yeah, I, I tend to use an app called windy.com, um, just to check out kind of the, the next week or 10 day forecast of what the wind's going to be doing. Yeah. Is and it pretty then, accurate? Can you go that far out or, I mean, I mean cause I know I seems like our weathermen can't even predict the weather right i mean the next hour the yeah. further out you get the less accurate it is and it right. seems to change around a lot it's but, actually um, i use the same app for flying paramotors and it's pretty good i think you can safely do about 48 hours to get a pretty accurate right, right. R- when you know it's you know if it's going to be windy if it says it's going to be 20 you know it's probably going to be really windy but then within 24 hours then it might get down to the actual mile per hour of where yeah. right. it's going to be and is that w-i-n-d-y Right, when yeah, you do, just okay. Just how it's spelled. And you can do it daily, which is good, and different times of the day as well. And it's, it seems to be getting better. You know, every year, like the technology they use to to predict weather seems like it gets better, and uh, it's been pretty accurate with, especially with a lot of the storms this last summer. Right. right. And do you um, need like when will you say wind is high enough to go from what? Um, it, it not, it's not necessarily about the wind speed directly. Gotcha. Um, you kind of want to see those low pressure systems further out. Um, and, but so that's what you're I looking mean, at. yeah, I mean, say, I would say 15, 20 knots and above is, is, you know, what we're looking for. Right. Um, you guys all get on the phones and call each other. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yep. Yep. And even if we don't, it's like, we'll probably end up out there anyway. Um, cause everyone <laughs> kind of watches it. Is yeah. it? Is, can you do it? Can you surf when the weather's right on top of you, or does it have to be offshore? It doesn't have to be offshore. You just, I mean, we've surfed plenty of times where we're kind of getting brushed by a hurricane, um, you know, and the rain will be almost sideways, and it'll just be, yeah, like you're in a hurricane. Um, <laughs> is that pre-hurricane or post-hurricane or both? <laughs> it's, it's both. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> during the hurricane. Oh, really? We actually uh, had surfed Hurricane Charlie 2003 at Fort Myers Beach. Oh. 2004. 2004 is Hurricane Charlie, yeah. Yeah. Mm, no, yeah. I, I'm going to fact check that one. Oh, really? Okay. Do you know that one up, Mike? I think you know, maybe, yeah, you're right. You know what? It was 2004. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I graduated in 2003. Yeah, <laughs> okay. it definitely was. I don't know why I always thought that. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, we couldn't get out to Sanibel. Because it was closed. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. yeah For everybody we that doesn't know, Hurricane Charlie was the huge storm that hit Santa, this area in 2004. Uh, uh, biggest one that hit here for 40 years. Right. So one lots of, of devastation. Hurricanes. The island was closed for weeks. No electricity. So mm-hmm. I guess you guys were crazy and went down to the beach. And yeah, that beach. was that's always fun it, when, you know, we get the power outage for 10 days. Um, but yeah, no, that was a good thing about that storm, too, is because we got some surf from it. So kind of gets rid of the boredom a little bit <laughs> but um how big of waves do you get from a hurricane like that uh well on, on captiva um probably uh you know three to six feet um that's kind of an average you know size here i mean it could be a little bit bigger than that um but i would say a solid you know six foot wave head high wave right and it. robin Dang. actually sent some pictures so yeah, put I'll, those up max because i don't know if there he is shredding it that you would never believe that that is you yeah i would never believe you would see waves like that no on, on, on and Sino we got to give out the shout out to patrick the, bailey patrick is it yeah, yeah patrick bailey the photos you see of me were taken by patrick bailey the couple where there's just a wave there i, I took actually that was hurricane michael um, oh, I mean, that's a huge wave. Towards the end, I'll keep, I'll keep going. Those, yeah. Okay. Barrels. Are- yeah, that was Hurricane Michael at Twain Waters right there. How long ago was that? Uh, Hurricane Michael, I think it was two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. Wow, yeah. how big were the waves there? That looked, uh, that last one that's looked like pretty a, big. That was, um, well, I'd say some shoulder high. Shoulder, yeah, shoulder really. to head high. Hmm. But the Dang. difference is they're breaking quite a way out, yeah? They're breaking, you're getting a long ride on those? Yeah, yeah no, well, the thing about the uh, hurricane swell is actually it's it's out of the south, so it's a really hard angle. So it's almost like a point break style wave where 
you're you're not just getting a quick breaking wave it's actually you know breaking down the beach nice and slow so you're getting these really long rides you see like on the in the summer right. oh cool huh. um now in awesome. the winter are you wearing um wetsuits are you yeah. still out there just in the um yeah i would say you know into november we're going to be in wetsuits right um it does it, the water does dip down pretty cold and especially if you get that you know wind chill too right. from a cold front what kind of temperature is the wa water in the winter um like 60s 62 yeah that's pretty stable um i've seen a couple of years where it got much colder though i've seen a couple of years where it dipped into the 40s uh killed a lot of fish you know there was dead snook everywhere yeah that's that cold. was a bit of a freak wasn't it that yeah was that a, was that a was weird a one years ago right and it yeah. was just yeah that was painful to be in it was pins and needles oh <laughs> yeah you're dedicated and then so if somebody was coming down here if they did think about bringing their gear what would what sort of uh what sort of thickness of length? wetsuit would you wear oh <laughs> thickness i mean a, a three two is going to be fine yeah um you know i usually wear a full just because i'm a Florida native and I, I can't <laughs> get cold. The cold. I can't do the cold. Right. Um, and how about a board? Is there a certain length you need? I don't really know much about surfing. So that's, that's going to be is that personal preference. That's going to be personal preference a lot. Um, unless you're learning, if you're learning, you probably want to get um, maybe a foam board about seven feet, a longer board, Bigger one. nice and stable um, and just go to blind pass and uh, yeah, try to just you know ride that nice calm wave right white, white water and what do you use what kind of boards or? um i use a few different boards um i, I for surfing for me is a, a big part of it is using different boards and trying different shapes and um so i mean my my main board if the surf is you know if the surf is good i'm going to be using a short board which is a i use a six foot board um fiberglass but um lately there's been a really big craze uh, about foam boards um they're kind of this new popular inexpensive alternative and they've uh, come a long way and actually they're they're really maneuverable but they're really fun to use and you can kind of trash them because they're inexpensive um and they come in all shapes and sizes so I'll, I'll i switch back and forth between my real board and my foam board you know if the surf is smaller i'll use a longer board hmm. what's the, what's the benefits of a foam board apart from the you can trash them but i mean is it are they easier to get up are on they lighter or? I guess. Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, the benefit would be they are a little bit more buoyant. Okay. Uh, like typically they're made to be a little bit more fun, you know, not just instead of serious surfing. So they'll add more volume to the board. Okay. So, so a little easier to get up. It'll float you really well. Yeah. And yeah, a little easier to get up. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just, a, it's all about having fun with them, you know? Mm. So and that's a big perfect, part of surfing. Perfect, perfect. So on a perfect day, how many how many people are out there in the surf it's so hard groupies. to say here you know it's so hard to say here because um you know i'll look at like anywhere on the east side of florida it's you know there's a pretty big surf culture um so anytime there's good surf you're gonna find crowded spots everywhere yeah. over here there's such a small surf community um that even on a, it could be a really good day where there's actually you and your buddy out that's it um or really? it could be um Typically, when we see a big crowd here, it's usually a hurricane, um, right. and we'll get people driving over from the East Coast. Oh, they actually come over. Wow. Um, yeah, and then, uh, I mean, yeah, everyone knows about it. But yeah. usually, the more dedicated people know about the smaller swells, and the, so it's usually just you and a couple of friends out there. Yeah, well, that's Dang. awesome. That sounds cool. And you go over to the other coast, too? Yeah, I mean, we try to whenever we can. Um, this summer and last summer, we're so busy here with hurricanes that we actually only went over a couple times. But um, you know, if it if it's flat over here, which it, it tends to be a lot, um, then we'll drive over. And like, where would you go on the other coast? It seems like Fort Pierce is our is our go to. Fort Pierce, it's, gotcha. it's almost straight across the right. state. Right. How here. long does that take you? Uh, it's about two and a half hours. So it's not far. Is it? Not yeah, it's, that it's bad. not too bad. Yeah. Um, South Florida too will will be really nice. You know, you get that nice clear water down in uh, Boca Raton or West Palm. Um, so yeah, it's one of my favorite places to surf down there. Do you uh, do you do any of the other board sports? Do you do kiteboarding or um, paddleboarding or anything? like I've that? I've never got well. I've, I've paddleboarded plenty of times. Um, I've never actually got into the kite surfing. Um, Which not. everybody, when you come across the causeway, that's what everybody thinks of. of the surfing oh yeah, here, right. Kite yeah, surfing for sure. And stuff. We have friends that do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, have, I have plenty of friends that do it, and it's. I mean, yeah. I'm sure it's it's, it's a blast. Um, yeah. But I've always intended to stick with surfing a little more. Um, but I do skimboard. 
um, and it's not really a traditional type of skimboarding. It's it's more akin to surfing. Um, so when say when the surf isn't quite big enough to surf a real board, you can uh, kind of skim the waves that are coming up to the beach, and you actually kind of skimboard out to it and surf on the wave. Um, hmm. So great exercise too, um, and it's, it's a little bit more like skateboarding. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I also grew up skateboarding as well. So, um, yeah, it's just a border. board sports. He's yeah, definitely well. a border. He's even got the rack on his car with the. On it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you can fit it in no your car. Bra- mentioned no brands, but he has got like the epitome of a border's car, really, and, you know, with a rack and a <laughs> four wheel drive. Just saying, it's you just. Know. I mean, yeah, it's 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 all about you know what's suited for your lifestyle for me. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Hell yeah. That sounds like That's fun. awesome. And um, yeah, one, uh, any, any, what's that, Max? You were going to say well, One question we always ask is if you were to suggest for somebody visiting down southwest Florida, Sanibel Captiva, other than, other than surfing, oh, goodness. what is your number one thing to do down here? Um, in Are you talking about in Fort Myers specifically? Fort Myers just, on the islands. We usually say on the islands, but wherever. Um, I mean, here, I mean, the f- fun stuff to do is mainly uh, nature oriented. So it's going to be like, you know, I would probably recommend to go kayaking like at Tarpon Bay or something. Yeah. Um, you know, Notice do- how he's not saying go surfing. <laughs> no, Max said don't <laughs> I go see, surfing. Besides oh, don't surfing. Go surfing. Oh, okay. Besides yeah, surfing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. No, I, I, in fact, I usually try to get people to surf when I'm out there. If I have an extra board in the beach, I'll, I'll offer it to people and oh, Max, get them we? out there. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah, Dad, you a big surfer? <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely move through the water. I don't know if it's on the surfboard. <laughs> you can do it. I, I, I believe in you. You could do it. You really? just need, a, need the right board. And uh, yeah, of course you could. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Hey, um, a couple of things going on this weekend. And uh, Robin bought one of those to light. Um, but this, uh, normally we're a week ahead with our podcast, uh, but this one has been recorded on Thursday. Wednesday. It's Tuesday. When, what is it? It's, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, it's the fifth, isn't it? No, sixth. It's the sixth. Six. Okay, these mechanical watches, no good. <laughs> um, okay, we'll get there with the date. Anyway, so this weekend, uh, Robin was talking about taking one of our long lenses up to. Tell us what's going oh, on this weekend. Well, that's actually next weekend. Uh, oh, the, we're sorry. ahead of this. But we really don't know what's still, going on. I think it's still worth mentioning because it's almost like an extreme, extreme weekend. You know, we've got, so there's the air show coming up. Tell us a bit where, but where it's, and this is only something that um, Robin's doing personally, but it, we were talking about it before. I thought you might like to know about it. Where is it? The, the what Pana, is it? The, an air show at oh. the Ponte Gorda. Okay, that's next. That's next weekend. Yeah, I think okay. so. The sixteenth, seventeenth. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an air show that's been around a long time, um, and uh, no, it just it's just something fun to run up there and and do, especially if you're kind of into aviation. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we we did it. Laurie and I did it a couple of years ago, and yeah. it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, they have some big aircraft there, and I mean, it's there's a ton of aircraft. Where the Blue Angels were there. And or the it, Thunderbirds. I, I'm not so, sure which yeah, one don't, it was. Don't get people ahead of themselves on that one because I don't think there's going to be it's um, not gonna be as Blue big. Angels this year or anything like that. They've uh, budget cutbacks have made it to where a lot of air shows have kind of lost that, oh, that okay. uh, funding for the military aircraft. Um, but I know they will have a, an F-16 Viper team demo. Jeez. Perfect. Um, awesome. And then the rest, I think they actually, they, they, they will have a... The C-17 uh, Globemaster will be there, too. It's a big cargo plane. Big. Um, but uh, It's a super cool air show, though. You can really get up close and personal. Right. Um, and there's not so many people there. You can literally be right up to the to the boundaries and, and watch everything. It's, yeah, it's and, really and, cool. and they will have private performers, too, um, as well as the you know older World War II fighters, too. And yeah. they'll usually park them on the runway, too, so you can kind of walk up and down and take a look at them. And, yeah. Just a fun weekend. Fantastic. And then this weekend, this I do know is true. You do? Okay. I can't wait. Uh, the, what? <laughs> over under. Uh, the over under. <laughs> no, it's the offshore racing is on this weekend. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah so we're Myers supposed Beach. to be going to the paddocks on Thursday, which we will uh, film if we go there. Yeah. If it's still on. And if it is this week, I think it is. And then uh, the races on Fort Myers Beach. Are, so they're coming back because they were here for a long, long time. And then the last couple it's of years. It's sailing so, race, right? 
No, it's, no, it's the it's power offshore boat. powerboat. Oh, yeah. powerboat race. Yeah, yeah powerboat races. So oh, well, wow. We'll be bringing something from that. We'll definitely be fil- filming that. So Is that... Do, do you... Uh, is the, they do that off of the Fort Myers Beach Pier? Or? Fort Myers Beach Pier, yeah. So it's right along the fort, uh, all the way down from the entrance, you know, off of uh, the point there. Uh, and then it goes point. all the way Bowditch. down, yeah. Right, Bowditch right. Point, yeah. So... They have thousands of boats coming out to watch it normally, so it's, we'll see. Yeah, no, I know it's usually pretty crowded. They have all the boats; they'll park along there. Um, oh, what day is that? I think it's uh, the starts Thursday is the paddock day, and then I think the actual races are over the weekend. Oh man, I was planning on taking the boat out. Yeah, we should yeah. do it. I don't know well, if we'll I can keep up filming. on Saturday. <laughs> you know, definitely <laughs> we'll won't race. be racing. <laughs> no. We'll be filming from it. I don't know about racing. <laughs> yeah. So a lot's going on here in Southwest Florida. Yeah, yeah. So it's a pretty busy weekend for stuff like that. And yeah. just real quickly, I just wanted to say uh, a big thank you to our sponsors, Bailey's General Store, Three Crafty Ladies, Spoon Drift Island Bowls, and Gator Bites Tail and Out. We went there for a spot of lunch today. It's just over the island. And we over had the their, bridge? Uh, uh, over, the, over the bridge, I'm sorry. And we had their gator sampler. It was pretty good, Max, wasn't it? It was awesome. Yeah, was really good. Really awesome. I don't know if I've ever had gator before, and it was very good. Yeah, very good. So it was so. like spice. What was the sampling? It was like, buffalo, breaded, four different types, yeah. Bloody Mary, and blackened gator. Mm. Did um, you have a favorite? Uh, buffalo was definitely my favorite. It so was really good. Not, it does uh, taste just like chicken, like they say. It's supposed to be lean and healthy for you, which is crazy to me. Well, it would be if they didn't cover it in battering and then fry it. But it tastes good. It tastes damn it? good. <laughs> did you eat the? Do they offer the tail section there, or do they actually offer? I think it's just tail. I think it's, it's just tail. The, uh, what, what, he says they get the fillet part of it, which I'm not sure. It's got to be just the tail. No, it's there is an actual cut that is the. It's the, the pr- there's a small part of the gator that's actually look at us being more informed. Yeah, no, I, I've actually well, I've had I've had both, and uh, yeah, no, it, it does. It's like uh, dark chicken meat almost. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. And tell us, uh, Max, a little bit about Max has started a TikTok um, channel. What's the TikTok, Max? I've uh, the TikTok is the Sand Cap Guide. I've been eating ev- er, on on a, a mission to eat every single restaurant in Santa Bella Captiva. Um, I'm like seven restaurants down of, out of 70. Yeah. Out of 70. So I'm, I'm almost there and I took a little detour over the bridge today. So we're, oh, uh, we're coming back. We're coming now. back soon. Right. <laughs> so check that out on TikTok. Check that it's out on under TikTok. the Sanibel Cap Diva guide. The Sand Cap guide. The Sand Cap guide. At the yep. Sand Cap guide. Um, yeah. Max and his element eating on the island, Eating food. So. Until he runs on, out of on money. my parents' dime. <laughs> yeah. is, he he jokingly calls it until he runs out of money, but he actually doesn't pay for anything. <laughs> All right, I've also got some trivia to close this out. Okay. All right. All right, Robin, are you ready for some trivia? The last I'm, two I'm podcasts, the guests have won. So, so no pressure. That might no be no a good thing for you. It might be a bad thing for you. Here here we go. <laughs> so we've been talking about waves in the Gulf of Mexico. Yes. So, as far as I could find, in the last twenty years. The largest waves recorded in the Gulf of Mexico were caused by Hurricane Ivan in 2004. How tall were they from peak to trough? So, as far as oh, I can tell, they're the Max, lo- the largest waves on. recorded in the Gulf of Mexico in the last 20 years. How high were they from peak to trough? Yeah, Robin's, Robin's really deep in, down in the brain bank. <laughs> Robin, I uh, there's not this. many times that I expect a guest to get something right, but all eyes are on you, buddy. He was no, uh, no. he was probably surfing the remnants of this wave. Oh no, <laughs> Ivan, we we for sure surfed Hurricane Ivan, and I remember um, what you're talking about, how it was the highest wave recorded. Okay, I uh, honestly, so. this is a completely out of thin air. So, oh, you guys are you guys are going to be guessing on all the questions today. I don't okay. think so. I think I know this. You can't go go it. You can't From, put a range, Dad, for the seven hundredth time. No range. <laughs> Hold on, no. Max. Did I just catch Mum cheating? Again? <laughs> She's looking again. She's looking again, yeah, asking like, for a range. How does she know uh, I put a range, Max? I already wrote my. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I was put looking to see if question dad. one, and then I put the okay. the height, and okay. you're coming okay. Oh range. my gosh, She's cheating again. Mom, we might need to get you a blindfold. <laughs> we need to get like a little divider here, <laughs> yeah. for, for like Chris the children on. with the folders. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's go. All right, Dad, you start us off. I always start off, and I can never get a chance to change my answer like Laurie does. I put ten foot three. <laughs> They're all exactly the same. I put 24 feet. <laughs> Is that Robin? a lot? I put 33. Jeez. Robin wins. Oh, okay. good. No way. But none of you are close. <laughs> it was okay. 91 feet. Oh, my what? God. 91 wow. feet. Right. It, 
it supposedly destroyed a bunch of uh, offshore oil rigs oh, and stuff. Right. I, I remember that. I don't know if it I came anywhere close to there. us, but it was in the Gulf. Well, by the time it came here, it yeah. was a lot. But they had it marked at 91 feet. Remember surfing that oh, one? Cow. Yeah, you oh, didn't. Ivan, no, I definitely surfed Ivan. But not a 91 footer. No. <laughs> no, that would definitely, you know, take Captiva out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No there would be there. no more islands. Uh, okay, so I take right. a win on that one. All right. No, one for Ravin. I have 91 feet, though. 91 oh, feet. No. Oh, that's funny, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, question uh, two. All right, question two. As the crow flies... We had, a, we had a little As the Crow Flies debacle last week, yes. but we'll not talk about it. As the Crow Flies, what is the distance between the lighthouse beach to the tip of Captiva at Redfish Pass? In miles, not inches. Are you talking As the Crow Flies? As the Crow Flies. You said that like five you, times. If you were to transform into a crow and fly directly from the lighthouse to, to uh, Redfish I'm, Pass at the shortest distance... Can I be a What's pelican, not a it could crow? could be a pelican, too. They fly the same distance in miles. <laughs> okay. okay, I've got it. You haven't written it down. <laughs> okay. Um, Redfish. Yep, Redfish Pass between Captiva and North Cap. Not Blind Pass. It's not, on, it's not road distance. Oh. It's, and if, if you don't know, Capti Sanibel and Captiva are in like a bow shape. Yeah. So it's going to be from... Thumb to my middle like finger, this. basically. Yeah. Well, that's. Um. Okay, I got it, and I know it's right. Can I change one? No, that's you just. Tough. She just saw. Yeah. What, did she just I look about? I swear. Hey, we, we need an answer. Okay, I'm good. Robin, okay. you got one. Yep, yep, I got it. All right, Robin, start us off. All right, I went with thirty miles. Okay, thirty, mom. I put twelve. Ma dad. I put nine point eight. Mom wins. Thirteen point three. But it's as the crow flies. That's yes. Right. The <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, it's 10 <laughs> yeah. miles. Okay, yeah, all right. It's, I, I don't know how else you want me to measure it. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, like, I, I measure it from my house, and it's, I'm measuring round trip. That's okay. where, that's where there, what? That'll do it. And we're not yeah. driving either. We're, we're flying we're as crows. crows. Right. I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm yeah. a crow in my car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One, so, what's the scores, Max? 1-1-0 uh, one, one, to dad. All right. Here we go. Jokes. This question is Jesus probably... It's a tiebreaker. Come on. This question is uh, Sanibel adjacent, but not necessarily Sanibel related. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, it's actually... Uh, well, you just hear it. Just read it. The tallest structure on Sanibel is the lighthouse seat, sitting at a measly... You want to know how tall it is? Yeah, I know. 98? 98, 98 feet. feet yeah. 98 feet. Thanks to Sanibel's strict building laws. However, Sanibel Tower in Dubai does not have to follow those ordinances. Oh, how tall is geez. it? Jeez. <laughs> in feet? In feet. Uh, it's, 20, it's 28 stories. I'll give you that hint. Do they have high ceilings? How many I, it is in Dubai, so I'm sure they have uh, they have a nice, nice lofty ceilings. Twenty eight feet, twenty eight stories, or twenty eight stories. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got it, Max, and I'm probably within an inch. <laughs> an inch. Are you talking about uh, the deliveries from the ground where the deliveries are at the front where the front porch is? From the top to the ground, Dad. <laughs> All right, I've got it. All right, mom, you got it. I'm She's trying to copy, but I've covered it. Uh, I'm going to be honest. This is probably the hardest trivia we've done so far. In I think this is quite feet. easy, actually. I just—it's now all three of us are going to be tied because oh, there'll be gosh. one for each of us. I hope you have a tiebreaker. <laughs> no, I do not have a tiebreaker. Oh, I do. I'll give you one. No, I, can I make it like my? Uh... No, that's it. Come on. I just was surprised to find. I was googling Sanibel for some reason. I was surprised to find that there's a Sanibel Tower in Dubai. Yeah, surprising. That's huh? interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Trivia for Sanibel Island. Yeah, there's a Sanibel cookie too. <laughs> it's three hundred and thirty-six. Really? Pe Pepperidge Farm cookies. Yes. Yeah, really, I did not know that. Well, there's also a Captiva Chevrolet uh, Chevrolet car. I should ask, like, <sighs> what what the base model Captiva Chevrolet car engine is i put 257 257 dad 336 i put 200 200 i'm winner uh, who is it 376 uh, feet yeah. we have a three-way tie <laughs> three-way tie you this may be our point. first this may be our first three-way tie as I far as i know that's first is, time we get yeah. a point i don't think so all right that well, was just low, just blow, low blow low blow low blow everyone take I, your I time cheat. okay 
Here we go. Dad, you want to? Are you? Oh, you're playing spin the bottle to what? see who wins. We got to have a winner in week, or should we just say it's me? Close okay. us off, Dad. Okay, <laughs> hold on. There, I, we could do how many keys on that keychain? We don't know if nobody looks. Just oh my God! Bell. Ring the bell <laughs> and close the episode. All right. Okay, thanks very much again winner. to our sponsors. Thank you, you very much up. for we Robin for joining. Um, <laughs> that was a great interview. Thanks for letting us a know. Very about informative surfing. episode. No check problem. out. It was great being there. Good. Yeah. Check, check out all the fun. things going on this weekend and next weekend and the weekend after. We're not. Sure. We'll put in the notes when it is. Uh, you've got the air show you've got the boat show and lots of other things going on so thanks very much for joining us it's been a good one have a good one guys